Dan Wooten has just made a major U-turn about a certain someone. However, does this mean that in the future he will finally admit that he's wrong about Amber Heard? up everyone it's me steph the alter nerd the the alternative and welcome to another dose of the daily nerd where i break down the news and pop culture stories of the day that's pretty much caught me eye and oh my goodness dan wooten has made an epic like insane amazing u-turn on a very high 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 ranking member of the royal family however because he's done that then the question comes up really in my mind could he do the same with amber heard could he finally in the future actually turn around and admit that he's wrong about his dear dear friend well i'm gonna break it all down for you in a moment before i do so though a little bit of housekeeping firstly youtube human reviewer i see you lurking i'm not gonna say any trigger words or anything that's going to offend your ear holes and to everyone else awesome enough to have clicked on this video Hi, welcome. How are you doing? If you love news and pop culture stories on the daily served with a little bit of sass and gobbiness, which is basically this, right? Do make sure you click on that subscribe button, like, share, comment, all of that good stuff. And so let's jump into this, shall we? So the high, high, high ranking member of the royal family that Dan Wooten has made a major U-turn on is King Charles III. Oh, 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 but let's start right at the beginning. Back in June, 27th of June, 2022, to be precise, Dan Wooten releases this opinion piece uh, in the Daily Mail, uh, titling it as, as a royalist, I hate to say it, but I'm beginning to doubt that Prince Charles has the capacity to become King Charles III without threatening the future of the British monarchy. Now, bear in mind, when this uh, article was released, King Charles III was usually known as Prince Charles at the time. This is why he's addressed as such in this article. Whew, now, he starts off against who was now known as King Charles very strong. How much longer are we going to turn a collective blind eye to the improper behaviour of Prince Charles that isn't fit for a king? For years, the heir's allies have insisted the closer he comes to the throne, the more consciously ill adjust and tone down the more controversial aspects of his behaviour. Sadly, mounting evidence makes it clear to anyone with half a brain that's blatantly not the case. Like, what? If anything, Charles' conduct is becoming more inappropriate as his mother enters the twilight years. Um, in the last fortnight alone, uh, we've seen uh, Prince Charles outrageously interfere uh, with government policies on uh, migrants. Um, uh, the leak of a statement that he made saying that he felt that the policy was appalling uh, suggests that in Dan's view, uh, that he's learnt nothing over the years about why it essentially keeps his nosy, naive and idealistic beak out of sensitive political debates. Yeah. Um, now, he says, uh, the prince's office at Clarence House did not deny Charles disagreed with the policy, but insisted that he remains politically neutral. And Dan Wooten retorts back saying, if you believe that, you'll believe Meghan Markle is a selfless charity campaigner. <sighs> like, he straight off the bat is like, Prince Charles at that time, as he was known, not fit to be a king. Not fit to be a king. And what's coming out of Clarence House at the moment? Uh, with things that he's been saying about certain policies, this, that, and the other. Yeah, well, if you believe that, well, you believe that pigs freaking fly is basically what he's saying. This is insane what he was saying about him back in that day. Um, he then, um, there was a report in the Sunday Times uh, that was revealed that uh, Prince Charles at the time had met with former Qatari Prime Minister uh, and pocketed 1 million euros, uh, carrying the cash in 500 euro notes in Fortnum and Mason carrier bags out of a meeting where no aides were present. Um, now, at the time, this was a big story and there were a lot, a lot of questions surrounding this situation. 
Um, he says, uh, if true, that's mind boggling revelation alone poses so many questions about Prince Charles's morality and sanity that it's hard to fathom this bloke will soon be in charge. Questioning his morality and sanity, saying that potentially it may not be up to scratch for him to be king. It's like, what? Now, while there's no suggestion that the payments that he, Prince Charles received at the time were illegal, they seem immoral and raise serious questions about a cash for access culture operating around our future head of state. Which that was, you know, the, the, the controversy at the time when that story broke. Um, he then says, you know, I find it particularly ironic that holier than thou, Charles, um, seems so prepared to cozy up to the Qatari regime responsible for so many evil, evil things. In my opinion, because boozy theory, whatever. Um, worryingly, I fear Prince William may be starting to take his lead from daddy rather than his impeccable grandmother. Um, this is insane. He really, really goes into Prince Charles here, as you can see here. Um, our royals should represent hope, positivity and support at times of crisis and must not fall into the trap of hysterical and politicised hyperbole, even on passion projects they deem to be part of their remit. Charles has got everything he wanted before the Queen's death, most notably a once unthinkable endorsement from her that his former mistress Camilla will become queen consort. It's time for him to grow up, stop the student politics and hire some adults who he knows will stand up to him. This is no longer a sideshow of a scandal because the very survival of the monarchy is at stake. Charles, most of us are willing you to succeed, but as it stands, you're spectacularly effing this up. Like, Guys, I've just picked out some little bits and bats in terms of what Dan Wooten's been saying there. But the language is strong with that one, with that particular article back in June. And that was, again, only a couple of months back. He ends it with, you are effing this up. You are not fit to be king. <gasps> wow. What a couple of months. <laughs> since then right because guess what published today what a role reversal what a freaking u-turn guys I'm happy to say I've changed my mind about King Charles III. After his pitch-perfect handling of his mother's death no wonder there's been a huge surge in public support for him Major U-turn, right? From ending with Charles, you're effing this up to oh, Yes what guys? King Charles. Oh. Now I'm cool that he's changed his mind. Like, brilliant. You're allowed to change your mind, don't get me wrong. Fair play, right? I question it though. I do, because overwhelmingly the public sentiment is that Prince, Ch uh, sorry, King Charles III, even I'm catching myself sometimes, guys, King Charles III, right, the public sentiment for him is that, oh my goodness, he's doing everything absolutely right, you know? And we've got so much hope for the monarchy and for the future of our country as him now leading as our head of state. That if Dan Wooten, let's put it this way, if Dan Wooten released another opinion piece completely trashing King Charles III, oh, he would get destroyed by the British public. Absolutely. So, for me, my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, has he actually changed his mind about King Charles III? And this is truthful? Or is it a case of, well, there's no other choice but to say good things now about King Charles III because of the overwhelming public opinion being so positive to what? King Charles III, right? Just see how, mu how much a couple of months 
Like the impact a couple of months make. Like what? Um, he says, uh, while I won't shy away from my criticisms of the former Prince of Wales, okay, uh, never have I been more delighted to admit I may well have been wrong. Um, King Charles has given himself to the people in a way that I found deeply emotional and convincing, which is true. That's true. Uh, while his mother is peerless, I feel what uh, King Charles has done with the first time, the hugs and even the kisses, is reach out to the public in a way that suggests he'll be a ha more hands-on monarch, which again, very, very true. Uh, his work ethic this week has been truly phenomenal. Snaps to that. Like a force of nature, this 73-year-old knows he's been waiting his entire life for this moment and nothing will hold him back now. And it's made a difference. He's been pitch perfect, pledging to remain apolitical and stop campaigning for controversial issues in his king's speech uh, to taking control of the wayward members of his family. There hasn't yet been one misstep. And think about it. In the other article that I just read, they turned round, Clarence House turned round to him and was like, well, when he becomes king, you know, he's going to be apolitical. And what did he say? Well, you know, if you believe that, then you believe that, you know, Meghan Markle is doing charity or whatever out of the goodness of her heart. It's all altruistic, like pigs fly kind of statement, right? Oh, but now he believes it. Now he believes it. Uh, huh. Interesting. It's not just me undergoing this sort of reevaluation uh, over the past five days of National Morning. New polling from YouGov released today reveals an unprecedented surge in support for the new monarch. Absolutely. Yes. Quite rightly so. But has that influenced this article because of the public support for King Charles III? Or do you truly, Dan, believe what you're writing here? Because it is quite a U-turn over the space of a couple of months. Especially with the absolute strength of dislike in his previous article that I've just read through with you a little bit of back in June, right? Um, even Camilla have harbored, you know, the public have harbored significant doubts about becoming queen now has the support of the majority. So while there's no doubt in my mind that Charles has done much in just a few days, time to overturn years of apprehension about how he'd cope in the top job, now he has to prove he can faithfully stick to his solemn pledges to the British public. And the tests are going to be almost daily. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Um... This is an absolute U-turn, guys from Prince Charles, you're effing this up, to King Charles the Great, right? Admitting that he's wrong. Now, whether you believe his U-turn is honest or not, right? I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say it is. Okay, I will. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and I will say that Dan Wooten's U-turn is honest. Fair play. I then wonder, from using such strong language against who he was known at the time of Prince Charles only a couple of months ago in June, and him being able to switch pretty much literally like that to King Charles the Great, right? My question then comes to, well, what about Amber Heard, right? Could he absolutely... In my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever. See the light and the actual truth, in my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, about Amber Heard. And make an absolute U-turn on her and turn around and say, do you know what? I'll admit my mistake. I was wrong. Amber Heard's the monster. Johnny Depp's the survivor. It's not inconceivable. Now that we have this example of his U-turn about King Charles III, right? Given the strong language that he used against him back in June, only a couple of months ago, right? The complication, though, of course, when it comes to Amber Heard's situation and his friendship with Amber Heard is that he, unfortunately, successfully defended 
um, in in the UK courts, um, his use of the word wife B um, uh, and using that as an adjective, um, attributing that to Johnny Depp. So if he admits that he's wrong about Amber Heard, he would then also have to admit that he's wrong about calling Johnny Depp that and that the outcome of the trial in the UK against the son and de facto him because he wrote the article was wrong as well. He, if he's got the balls to do an honest U-turn about King Charles III, does he have the balls to do a U-turn and admit he's wrong about Amber Heard? Do you know what? I might surprise a couple of people here by saying this. I say a couple, maybe a lot of you. I think it's possible. <laughs> I think it's really, really possible. Dan Wooten was not kind, not kind to how he was then known as Prince Charles over the years. Not kind at all. Uh, there was always, always talk um, of, you know, wanting King Charles to step aside pretty quickly to actually allow Prince William to ascend to the throne quicker. And just King, Ch uh, Prince Charles, make way, just let Prince William uh, basically leapfrog you to the throne, right? There was a lot of talk of that. And he's made this massive U-turn now. And he's like King Charles the Great. It opens up for me the possibility he could change his mind on Amber Heard. Watch this space, guys. Watch this space. Enough with my gob, though. It's time for your gobs in the comments down below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Any of all comments, always welcome. And if you love this video and love news and true and... Uh, when I can get my teeth back in love news and pop culture stories on the daily served with a little bit of sass and gobbiness which is basically this right do make sure you click on that subscribe button like share comment all of that good stuff and until the next time you guys laters